Unreal Engine version 5.1 is officially here. So that means it's time to jump into some new feature tutorials. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Wave Editor. So make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So the waveform editor is a plugin and it's still currently in beta. So it's something that we need to enable first before we're able to use it. So we're going to go up to our edit window. We're going to come down to our plugins and in our plugins window, we're going to click on audio. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see the option for your waveform editor. Now, if you're just starting a project, chances are this isn't ticked. Mine's already enabled. Uh, but you'll tick this box, you'll get a pop-up at the bottom saying that the engine needs to be restarted before you can use it. And you'll probably also get a pop-up in the middle of your screen letting you know that it's in beta. And that Epic Games just kind of strongly recommends using it with caution because beta plugins can cause instability. Now because the waveform editor isn't something that ships with your project, it's just a tool within the engine, I think we'll be okay. Uh, but just use caution whenever you see that window. Once the plugin's been enabled, you'll be able to come into any of your source audio files, right click on it, and you'll see this option for edit waveform. Clicking on this will then bring up the edit waveform window. So before we start diving into features, I do wanna get you familiar with the user interface that we have. So the biggest part of this is right here in the middle of the screen, which is our waveform. Now, for those of you who are coming from the audio side, who work inside of a DAW like Pro Tools or Reaper or whatever the case may be, uh, this is probably a view that you're very familiar with seeing. For those of you who are coming from the programming side, this may not be. So I will give a brief overview. Uh, basically, our waveform is a graph. And in the middle of this waveform here, I don't know how easy it is gonna be to see on your screen, but we do have a line that runs right through the middle of our waveform. This is what we call the zero crossing line. And basically, as this sample plays, any of these peaks that are further away from that zero crossing line means they're going to be louder at that particular sample than some of these other peaks that are a little closer to it. And at the top of our screen, we have our timeline. Now, uh, this timeline is in seconds. However, right-clicking on that timeline will allow you to switch it to frames. So if you're someone who is coming maybe from the video editing side, that might be something you're more familiar with working in. I'm personally more familiar with working in seconds, um, so I'm gonna change it back, but you can set that to whatever you like. Hitting the space bar, like in your DAW, will play this audio file. And you're also able to use this slider here uh, to scrub through that audio file. Now, it doesn't play as you scrub through. Uh, it's just defining where your playhead is. Uh, but if we move it, say here, to around four seconds and then hit play, it will start playing this from the four second mark. Alternatively, up here at the top, uh, we do have some basic transport controls, our play, pause, and stop, that also function in the same way as your spacebar. Next to it, we have our plus and minus, uh, which is our zoom function. Um, it'll allow you to zoom in, and it does always zoom in to wherever that playhead is located. Alternatively, if you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel on it, we can just use the scroll wheel as well. Now when we're zoomed in, one feature that we don't have that I personally would like to see uh, would be to be able to slide your view left and right. Um, I don't know if the, the developers watch this. I do know that when you right click on the waveform, it doesn't seem to do anything. So maybe it would be nice to be able to right click and then drag left or right to kind of scroll that view. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. The next button after our zoom um, is our export button. I'm actually gonna skip over this for now uh, because it is one of the big features of this. So we'll be diving into that in just a moment. 
Over here on the left, we have our two tabbed panel and we have our processing and our details. Uh, under the details panel, if you're familiar with working with audio files inside Unreal Engine, this is all stuff that you've probably seen before. Under the processing tab, uh, for those of you who are familiar with working in a DAW, uh, you can sort of think of this like your effects rack. Uh, now in a DAW, this is where you would do things like your reverb and delay and stuff. That's gonna be done inside your meta sound or your sound cue. What we do have under here though, is our different transformations. And we actually have two different elements that we can select from. The first one is gonna be our waveform transformation normalize. And the other one is going to be our waveform transformation trim fade. And now I think that's a great segue point to move from getting familiar with the user interface. And uh, now we're gonna start talking about the functionality of this waveform editor. The first function that we're gonna take a look at is normalizing. And now a lot of people do get normalizing and compression confused, but they are two separate things. Compression will squish your audio file. Uh, in the simplest terms, compression will make quiet sounds louder and louder sounds quieter, uh, depending on the parameters that you give that compressor. Uh, normalizing, however, just applies an overall gain to the audio file to achieve a target loudness. Now the most common use of normalizing audio for me personally, I see used most with dialogue, uh, but you can certainly use this on any type of audio file. And really what normalizing is good for, especially if you have multiple different audio files, is you can set a target loudness across all of your audio files and say one audio file was recorded uh, very loudly while the other one may have been recorded more quietly, uh, we can get a uniform loudness across multiple samples. So the way that we apply normalization is over here in our waveform processing, we have our transformations and we can just go ahead and add an element from our drop down. We're gonna select this waveform transformation normalize. It's gonna give us more drop downs and we have three options here. Uh, the first is our target. Uh, it's currently set to zero by default, which means the target loudness is by default zero decibels. Anything louder than that will be clipping and sound distorted. Um, and so that being said, the maximum number that you can have in this field is zero and the rest being into the negative numbers. And this is done in decibels. So let's say that we wanted our target loudness to be minus three dB. We would set exactly that in our field. Now this next field is our max gain. This is the amount of gain that will be applied to this waveform to get it to whatever we set for our target. So for example, I don't currently know the default max loudness of the audio file, but I do know that I want it at minus three dB. And so I'm just going to go ahead and apply gain until it stops moving. And the way that this works is once it achieves that minus three dB, you can keep going up as high as you want on this and nothing's gonna change. It's achieved the target of minus three decibels and therefore it will stop. The last field that we have is our mode. And in this dropdown, we have three options. We have peak, uh, which is the highest point on this waveform. We have our RMS, which is essentially the average uh, loudness of that audio file. And then the last thing that we have is our de-weighted loudness. And weighted loudness refers to the human perception of loudness because we don't hear all frequencies at the same perceived volume level. Uh, for example, we do hear bass frequencies will, uh, will seem louder than high frequencies, even if they're both at minus three. 
So this just kind of gives us a curve to follow to find that average loudness. The next function we're gonna talk about is the trim fade function. And this is gonna be extremely useful for those of you who are developing projects and maybe instead of working with a sound designer, you're working with some sound library assets. So when it comes to sound effects in sound libraries, it's pretty common that you'll see one audio file that contains multiple variations of that sound. Uh, for example, as you see on the screen, uh, we've got a an audio file that has eight different shotgun sounds, uh, but because it is all contained on one file, that's not something that we're just gonna immediately throw into our game because then if the player fires that weapon once, we're gonna hear all eight samples because it's gonna play that file from start to finish. So just like we did with our normalize, we're gonna come up here to our transformations and we are going to now, instead of select normalize, we're gonna select the trim fade from this drop down. And this is gonna give us two options individually, the trim and the fade. And so to start with the, the trim, this allows us to edit the start and end time of a file. So maybe the audio file that you're working with, uh, they hit record, they waited a second or two, then the sound happened, and then there's some silence on the end. And so that's just gonna give us the ability to trim that up and really define what space we want. The fade section, uh, that's gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to allow you to fade in or fade out an audio file. So maybe you have a file that just has a super harsh transient that you kind of want to shape off a little bit, or maybe you have a music file that you want to fade in instead of just start abruptly. This is going to give you the power to do that. The next two options that we have here are our fade in and fade out curve. And uh, we'll use our fade in here. And by default, our fade in curve is set to one, which is a linear fade. Increasing this value above one will give it a, a more gradual then eccentric curve. And then setting this anywhere between zero and one is going to do the opposite. It's going to start to fade in extremely quickly and then slowly ramp off. So now that we've talked about those two functions, we're gonna jump back up here to this export button. And uh, we're still gonna be using the same audio file that has the eight different gunshots. And the reason that I cleared this back out over here is because I wanted to point out the moment that we click this add element button, you'll see that we get a little star up here by the file name. And also down here at the bottom, we get a notification that we have one unsaved asset. Uh, this is gonna come into importance a little later, but I did wanna make a special note of that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna re-add our trim fade here. So with our trim fade added, uh, we're gonna use the trim section and we're gonna use this to extract just this third gunshot here. And so, like I said, you know, we can zoom in wherever that playhead is. So we're gonna put the playhead real close to the first, that third gunshot. And instead of using this slider, which can be a little tricky, we can actually just grab this fade or this trim line and we can move it right up to where we want that file to start. And the same with our end. So we can go ahead and move that in. And uh, just like the other line, we can grab that and drag it as well. So now that we've got just that third gunshot selected, uh, I can hit this export and it will bring up this dialogue and tell you that it's going to save this as the original file was just named SFX underscore shotgun. It's going to create another asset called SFX underscore shotgun underscore edited. And if I hit save and then pull over my content browser, you can see that we have our original file, but now we also just have that one single gunshot. Now, like I said, it's important to note that it checks this audio file now as an unsaved asset. 
So if I were to come up here and maybe I closed out of this and I was getting ready to close my session, I'm sure you guys have seen that dialog box that pops up that says you have unsaved assets. Would you like to save them before you close? If I were to save this right now, it would save that original audio file as this trimmed file. So with that being said, I would recommend kind of getting in the habit of just reverting all of your changes after you've made all of your edits and then save it again. That way you still have the original file should you need to go back and make some additional changes. Another feature to note with this export is you'll notice that right next to it, uh, we've got the three vertical dots, which opens up the options menu for our export. Now, the only thing that's in here is listed as the ability to export this particular audio file as mono or stereo. So because we do have a stereo file, uh, maybe we want to also have a mono version. Uh, we can just select mono from that, export it again. And now, again, if I drag the window over here for my content browser, here's the first one that we exported, which is, you can see is a stereo file. We have the two channels and then here is our mono file, which we can see just has one single channel or our center channel. And so it essentially just sums that stereo down into a mono. And that way you now have a mono file from a stereo source. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up on the Wave Editor. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, 5.1 has brought us several new features, so do expect more videos on some of the new 5.1 features and tutorials and things like that. Uh, if there's anything specific that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Until next time.